Well, in a previous video, we found holes in the ground with webbing on top. And now we know what kind of spider lives down there. It's tarantulas. We're down uh, south of Ash Fork now, just by a few miles. And we're camped out here in the National Forest in a beautiful place. We're surrounded by cattle and they agreed to let us spend the night. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to do something we've never done. We're going down through uh, Eastern Arizona. So we're going to bring you along for that. Stay tuned. Well, just made coffee. We're just getting going this morning. Um, the only problem with this campsite is the dust is ankle deep, but every campsite has something, flies or mosquitoes or, or dust or something like that. The, cow, the cows left us alone. They were very respectful and kept their distance. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> hey, you know, people ask us why we spend so much time in the desert and it happens to be because we hate mosquitoes. But I'll tell you what, if you get down to a desert area and you get near water, the mosquitoes are voracious. They're the worst mosquitoes in the world is desert mosquitoes should you encounter them. As any of you regular viewers probably already know, we don't uh, ever have a plan when we're going somewhere except for maybe a general direction. And today we're going a little further east to Williams, Arizona. Now that's where you would turn north and go to the Grand Canyon. But we're going to turn south and head down through the forest and there's a ton of forest roads down in there it's it's kind of incredible when you look at them all on the map so we're going to head down into that area because we've never been there before and we're just going to kind of scope it out and see what's there every few days we have to hit some major town not a major town but a town that's got decent shopping and you know there's always those things like uh, doing laundry that need to get done but most of the time we just spend out away from everything as much as possible. The neat thing about Arizona is that they, every little place has these water kiosks where you can fill up water for uh, 25 cents a gallon, drinking water, filtered drinking water. And that's something we find really convenient. I wish Nevada had more of that, but it doesn't. If you get to a slightly larger town that has Walmarts, they always have those water filling stations inside. It's a little more expensive, but the water is always good. So water, laundry, some groceries. We went for um, uh, close to a month here without, without going into a Walmart or even seeing one. <laughs> so we constantly do our shopping at these little tiny stores in these little tiny towns, and the cost is higher. But uh, we do okay, manage to get what we need. Well, good morning. We did make it down south of Williams. Um, Williams, of course, is quite the touristy town because that's where you exit Highway 40 to go north. To, to the, the Grand Canyon. That's right. And it's, uh, you got to watch out. When you first come into town, gas prices are really high, but there's a couple of little stations kind of in the center of town where gas is very yeah. reasonable. The old stations, yeah. One was like a Circle K. Circle K, yeah. And the other one was, uh, don't, don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the difference was 90 cents a gallon in town. So that's the difference. We took highway 73, um, south out of Williams. It's the uh, ski area road, but it goes down into national forest. You can, if you brought an ATV up here, you could go for days, maybe weeks. You could follow roads all the way down to Jerome or even Sedona. Mm -hmm. Lots of places to camp, yeah, Linda? Yep. And yeah, and lots of ATVs and those um, dune buggy type fat go fast ones. What do you yeah. call those? <laughs> I don't know, but they look like a lot of fun. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but anyways, there's a lot of places to camp down here. You can be totally by yourself like we are, or you can be in um, other dispersed area campgrounds mm -hmm. where there's uh, other people, like it's real flat and other people, but separated. And then there's our actual uh, National Forest Service campgrounds also. But today we're going to pack it up and head for Flagstaff. And then we're going to do the same thing south out of Flagstaff, I think on Highway 3. Because that's the area, area, 
That's the area of Arizona we've never been. Yeah, where's that? <laughs> don't know, we gotta go find it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And we don't usually see too many YouTube videos from that area either, so we'll check it out. Well, in a previous video, we found holes in the ground with webbing on top. And now we know what kind of spider lives down there. It's tarantulas. Now I've got one in front of me here. I'm gonna try, as soon as, you, I, as soon as he sees me, he pokes down the hole. But he keeps coming out and sunning himself. So I'm gonna to try to put the camera over the hole just to see what happens. Okay, where's the hole? There it is. See him in there? I think his body is about two inches across. That's him. There, he just ran down. Just a big furry friendly kind of guy. <laughs> I guess they make good pets. One time Linda and I were going down a highway from Pueblo, Colorado and we were heading east into Kansas. And there was tarantulas all over the road. And the way I pictured it was like, if you laid out four by eight sheets of plywood, there'd be a tarantula in the middle of each one. And they were all moving in the same direction. Thousands of tarantulas down the highway. You couldn't drive without running them over. There was nothing you could do. All moving in the same direction. And I guess it was mating season, and they were looking for a mate. Well, look at this place. This is about 20 miles south of Flagstaff, <clears throat> Coconino National Forest. What a beautiful place to camp. And you know, the road getting in here was the type where you, it says, please close the gate. It's just a little uh, rough, uh, narrow dirt forest, uh, forest service road. And this looks ideal, doesn't it? But it's not. We camped in a spot like this a couple nights ago. Let me show you why, why this is not a good place. It's the dust. It's so dry here that within a short period of time, you're dust up to your kneecaps. <laughs> so you just walk around and there's that poof, poof, poof all the time. So we're gonna look for something else, but it is pretty. Well, this place is a lot better. <laughs> uh, it's just about another 10 miles down the road, just a different area of forest. It's nice and grassy and green. Just a beautiful place. Give you a little view of it here behind me. And I don't know if we'll stay here one night or two nights or what. It's a very pleasant place. I've got some southern exposure for the solar panels, so we're good. Beautiful, big ponderosa pines, real big. You know, when I was a young man, I lived in Washington State. And on the west side of the Cascades, you can't walk through the forest without a bulldozer. <laughs> I love this kind of forest, though, the ponderosa pines and the grass. You can just walk right through. Hey, just a quick note about what's working good on this trip. Let me show you. The aft galley is working really good. It's working great. We love it. It's, it's just making it so easy to cook outside. We can also cook inside when we fold the table down, but most of our cooking is done outside because of the heat and the, you know, smells and things like that. Aft galley, working great. And it only took me, I think, a day and a half of uh, part-time uh, putting this uh, drawer system together in my garage. It's not fancy. It's pretty rough carpentry, but it works. It has two really long drawers and they slide on carpeting and they don't slide out while we're, while we're driving. This drawer here has this removable top 
So it's another long drawer, and then this top stows vertically right alongside it here, next to the wheel well, aft wheel well. And that works really great. You've all seen this stove set up, I'm sure you have. It's, it just goes through a hole in the, in the galley there, and that's just a thin piece of aluminum here to kind of protect it. And uh, I just bought this stove on this trip because the other one, the valve started leaking, and I normally have little uh, bolts that stick down with acorn nuts on each corner that, that make it so that this stands up. So it sits, you know, sits up off. It doesn't sit on the, it doesn't sit on the bottom. It actually um, stands up just a little bit on four bolts. But this is a uh, Ozark Trail one. And <laughs> believe it or not, let me show you something. Let me get down here lower. Watch this. It, it kind of sits on the, on the cone part right there. So it sits off and then we can tilt it depending on the slope of the car. It's like having a little gimbaled stove there. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's working great. Another thing that's working great on this trip is the two propane bottles that I put on here. It is so nice not having to worry anymore about running out of propane because I don't know how much is left. So the way this worked out is one propane bottle is actually on the center line of the trailer. And then the other propane bottle is, there's, I did a video on this, so you can watch the video and see exactly how I did it. The other propane bottle is mounted off center. And it wasn't to get more propane. One single 20 pound bottle was plenty of propane for us. I just never knew when it was gonna run out. You can put a 40 pound bottle on there. You still don't know when you're gonna run out. And if you run out on some frosty cold morning, the missus isn't gonna be very happy with you. This way, one bottle runs out, you switch over to the other one and get the empty one filled. You know where you're at. It would actually work on this little trailer. It would have been better with two 10 pound bottles. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, but I didn't have them. I had two, two 20s at home and 20s are cheap. 10s are actually more expensive than 20s, I do believe. But this worked out. Now let me show you. Turning radius is something I gotta think about here. If I'm backing up, the rear bumper will get close to this, but when the rear bumper gets close to this, I'm already jackknifed, meaning that I'm backing up and I can no longer steer the trailer in reverse. I've gone too far, it's too far canted over. Those of you that tow will know what I'm talking about. So I, I don't get that far over because I've gone past the point of controlling the trailer, but I do have to think about it. So that's why two tens would actually be better on here if you have a little cargo trailer. But these two twenties are working for me. I have no problem. This is a good thing. I'm so happy with it. I no longer worry about how much propane is left. Do I have to stop and fill a partially empty tank? They don't like it when you fill a partially empty tank. <laughs> Gee, buddy, you only, I always, I was only able to put two gallons in, you know, <laughs> anyways. This works. Another winner on this trip is our Iceco 12 volt compressor refrigerator we brought along this time. Just purrs like a kitten and there's cold beer in it. Not too happy with the EcoFlow right now. However, I am happy with their um, uh, tech support. Uh, right now the EcoFlow is not accepting a charge off of solar very well. It'll, it'll be charging, you know, there'll be 145 watts going into it off my roof panel, and then it'll drop down to zero because it thinks it's charged. And it may only be at 70% or something. And it does that every couple minutes, it just falls off to zero and then it'll just start back up again. So it really lengthens the charge time. But I got a hold of EcoFlow and they've already sent me a return authorization, shipping label and everything. So, um, so their warranty service, is good. So I am able to use it. It does get up to a uh, full charge and I've got full charge set at 95%. You can set it at whatever percentage you want. Uh, that's one nice thing about EcoFlow is they're really adjustable. And I have it set at 95% because it, it kind of hurts these batteries to charge them up to 100% all the time. So sometimes it, it doesn't matter what the company is, who the company is, what their reputation is, how good or bad they are. 
you're going to get a, a, a faulty piece of, piece of merchandise. And what really matters is what they do when that happens. EcoFlow was right on it. Oh, hey, by the way, when you do have a problem, like with, with a, re, a 12 volt compressor refrigerator or a um, power station like the EcoFlow or, or any other brand, Blue Eddy, any of them, they will ask you to send them a video of what it's doing so they can actually watch what it's doing. And you can just do that video on your phone or something, but uh, it helps them see what's going on. And that's what I did with EcoFlow. They could watch the charge and then they watched it just fall off, you know, and they, and they immediately said, send it back. So anyways, they're good, they, good in that respect. Well, we're currently about 25 miles south of Flagstaff, Arizona on Highway 3. Uh, and we're in National Forest on National Forest Road number 91. Tons of places to camp, not just on this road, but on all the roads that branch off Highway 3. Uh, coming in here, we're a couple miles off the road off the highway, I mean, and there were uh, numerous places where it was fifth wheelers and things, motorhomes parked, because you can get in um, with a big outfit, you can get in here. And we were able to find a spot all by ourselves, peace and quiet, nobody around. So you can find all kinds of places. Also coming down the highway from Flagstaff, you'll see National Forest campgrounds one after the other all over the place coming down here. So if you like to park in a campground that has a fire pit and a picnic table and pit toilets, those are plentiful. There's a lot of them down here. There's property on this road, Forest Service Road 91, for sale. I can see like a ranch house, I can see a horse trailer. I can't see, I, you know, there's a for sale sign in front of it. I don't want to go down and snoop. I don't know if it's two acres or 2,000 acres, but for you folks out there with money, you might want to check this out because it is in the middle of beautiful national forest. Well, it is a beautiful morning. And I was just strolling around and <clears throat> not too far from where I'm camped and is this mess out here. So I'm going to clean it up. There's cans and bottles kind of strewing in this area. And I don't think they belong here. Anyhow, it's just a part of life nowadays. Oh, I see another uh, fire ring over there. I'll have to go check that one too. Well, this other fire ring is actually clean. You know, I don't want to make a big deal about the garbage that I pick up in every video that I make, but I will include a clip as often as possible to encourage you to do the same. You know, just until recently, I never did this, the cleanup part, until I was encouraged by another YouTuber. The thing is that when you see something, now let me put this personally, when I see something like this, I'm repulsed. And repulsed means it drives you away, right? But at least after I go out and pick it up, I feel more comfortable with the space that I'm in and with the place that I'm in. It makes me feel better. I think it'd make you feel better too if you did it. So just bite the bullet and get out a bag and clean it up. It'll make you feel better about your surroundings. Man, what an incredible cedar tree this thing is. It's about six or eight feet in diameter down here at the base and look how it's repairing itself from a previous lightning strike or or a fire something like that isn't that something let me put my hand out here you can kind of see oops this is a limb sticking out and the bark is just amazing. It's like a dragon or something. Anyways, I just thought it was cool. Well, Linda and I spent the last few days down in Phoenix area 
visiting friends and family. It was it was busting 100 degrees every day, so we were lucky to stay in a nice air-conditioned home. <laughs> then we left there and headed up Highway 87 towards Payson, and then we took Highway 260 over towards Sholo, and we haven't reached Sholo yet. We're just camped out here uh, in, Nash in the uh, National Forest. I can... Uh, this area is really busy. Now this is Memorial Day weekend, so it's going to be packed, but I swear the entire population of Phoenix is up here. <laughs> it, it's a beautiful forest. I mean, it's really nice, but all the campgrounds are full and there are at least a hundred campgrounds in this area. I mean, it seems like it. We were just one after the other and uh, all full and all the dis dispersed camping sites are also all full. So what we did is we sought out a really rough road and we managed to uh, go in a couple hundred yards off of the freeway, maybe maybe about four or five hundred yards off the freeway. And, uh, and we got a pretty nice little spot to camp for the night. But I can kind of see now why you don't see a lot of YouTube videos of this area of Arizona. It's um, not the kind of place where you would go to disperse camp. It's mostly uh, organized campgrounds and things like that. It's not a bad thing. It's a nice place, but um, I don't see a lot of info on it. That's why we came over here to check it out. I'm not saying there's no info on it. I'm just saying that I never see too much, just an occasional video. Well, we set out to get a peek at portions of Eastern Arizona where we'd never been. And let me show you a little bit about what we found. Here's the entire state of Arizona. Phoenix is here. Flagstaff is here. This is some of what we wanted to get a look at, and there's a lot more to see. From Phoenix, we headed back up to Payson, and then we took Highway 260 and headed over towards Sholo. And then from there, we went out and, and went up into New Mexico. But here in the uh, Tonto National Forest and the Apache, Apache Sitgraves National Forest, there are hundreds of campgrounds from Flagstaff down to Payson over to Sholo. And this was a holiday weekend. All of those hundreds of campgrounds were full. All of the dispersed camping sites that we we kept trying to find a place to camp and they were all full. So <laughs> We finally found a place near Heber where we backed in and uh, just for overnight, just off the, off the highway and we spent the night. So our take on all of this area is that it's very crowded. And if you're gonna, I think that even on a non-holiday non weekend, if you're just coming out for a weekend, it's going to be crowded. There's a lot of people in this area and over here too and Sholo and Flagstaff and they're all hitting this pretty hard. So I think that's why I don't see too many YouTube videos on this area here. Beautiful, oh yeah, absolutely gorgeous. But if you're gonna do this, do it on a get there in the middle of the week and um, maybe you'd be all right that way. Please keep in mind, there's a lot more to Eastern Arizona than what I just showed you. Well, that's what we found in that small portion of Eastern Arizona we showed you. Your experience may be different than that, and you don't know until you get out there and find out for yourselves. Hey, thanks for coming along. Please like. Share and subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you around.